Welcome to the Evolpreneur AI Advantage Show, and I'm your host, Richard Ray. My mission is to help entrepreneurs understand AI and use it to their advantage. Join me today where we dig deep with our guest and get you the best concepts and strategies. Today's special guest is Richard Blank. Richard is the Chief Executive Officer for Costa Rica's call center since 2008. When he was 27, he relocated to Costa Rica to train employees one of the larger call centers in San Jose, with a mix of a motivational speaking style backed by tactful and appropriate rhetoric. He shared his knowledge and trained over 10,000 bilingual telemarketers. Today, we're talking about AI in Costa Rican call centers. Richard, welcome to the show. Richard, I'm so happy to be here as well. And I cannot wait to shed some light on AI in the call center BPO industry. Also hang out with my buddy there in Australia. So looking forward <laughs> to having a really good time, mate. Let's do this. I'm looking forward to this too. And you've kind of answered the question I always like to ask my guests first of all, which is, Richard, where in the world are you? I am north of Panama, south of Nicaragua, in beautiful Central American paradise, Costa Rica. It does sound beautiful. Everything I've seen about there looks wonderful. And what's the weather like today? Has it been nice? Yeah, the top's down on the convertible and it hasn't been raining. And if you don't put on sunscreen, you're going to get burned from all the sunshine. So I live in one of the most beautiful, lush, tropical places in the world. And their expression here is pure, ah, pura vida, which means pure life. Oh, I and do so like it really that. represents the culture that lives here in Costa Rica. I do like the sound of that. Let's get into the world of AI. But first, mm -hmm. let's talk about you a little bit. You moved from uh, the US 27 years ago, and it sounds like you've done some amazing things. Tell us a little bit about your background and how you came to be in Costa Rica in the first place. I'm a proud Northeast Philadelphian. Oh, yeah. I grew up around Rocky. And so when I was growing up and it got cold, I always wanted to live in a nice tropical place. That's number one. That is a really cold part of the world. I, I have been there, and that is damn cold. I tell you, though, the fall is usually the best time of the year, right around Halloween. I always love the fall and uh, the leaves and the smell of the fire burning in the fireplaces. But um, it was nice for my first 18 years of life. When I graduated the proud Abington High School, I decided to double down on my favorite class, which was Spanish. Mm -hmm. So I went to the University of Arizona, majored in Spanish, interned for Telemundo and worked for the importers of Corona postgrad. And then when I was 27 years old, Richard... I was given a one in a million opportunity to work at my friend's call center in Costa Rica for just a couple months, teach English. Well, if you can get past your parents' guilt in Australia, you can also do it in <laughs> Philadelphia. And I decide if that barn door is open, I'm not coming back. So, uh, Yeah, Move, moving away from the family is always an interesting challenge, especially when there's some uh, significant time zones between it. But if you have good intentions, I was building Absolutely. on momentum. This was my major in college. And so even though they didn't understand it, you should still support it. And so there was a lot of positive reinforcement that I got here. I fell in love and married the girl of my dreams. I worked at my friend's center for four years and learned the business from the inside out, not at sea level. And I started a business 16 years ago with the stars being aligned. I'm here today. And so um, it's a whirlwind. And I think that you need to take some major risk taking chances in life. You can't always depend on that computer output to give it to you. You sometimes have to deal with your butterflies and your sixth sense and your intuition. That's the one thing the brilliant AI will never be able to tap into. It will never give you butterflies. And so I had to follow this vision quest that I had and this serious momentum where I could look in the mirror and respect myself because I could have always gone into a family business or followed under certain scholastic expectations, like my grandfather that went to Harvard Law. My dad went to Columbia Business. I, I couldn't do those things. I didn't have the maturity, the structure, the discipline, you know? That's really interesting. So you've struck out, you've done these amazing things, and you've done the thing that I'm always impressed with, which is you move away from home. And that's always a challenge. And you've made a big success of it very clearly. And then I went here, though, it, it was easy. It's not like I started from scratch. Admittedly, but it's always, you know, it's always a challenge one way or another to uh, actually have the nerve to do that. Some people, like you say, they could have done the easy thing and gone to the family business. 
So it's, you know, it always takes a certain amount of, uh, you know, backbone. Yeah, but sure. Don't you want to leave a castle so you can slay a dragon, save a princess and become a prince? I mean, what sort of life do you really want to have? You can do it in lockstep and follow in certain directions. Or you can take this blank canvas and do it yourself. And I was willing to die with my boots on. Is it irresponsible for those that have failed? Or maybe didn't have a plan? But I was really willing to go all the way on this. And if you have that sort of vigor and that sort of grit, those are the things, the hero's journey, where when someone travels the world and they come back to their town where they started, they can tell these stories and, and pay it forward in regards to confidence and energy and excitement because most people, as you say, wish that they could, and maybe I don't understand if they don't have the guts to do it. That's their own thing. That's their own forced march. I'm not going to hit the ball and drag Johnny, but I'll get on a podcast with my buddy Richard and you and I will swap stories about winning and about going the distance when you're learning what it takes to take one in the chin and to work on your core and work on your balance because you're going to take hits. And if you can't take it, then don't do it. But if you're willing to go for it, then find the right mentors. And put yourself in environments where you can give yourself checkpoints that are extremely realistic. And then you can see little by little, like bricks, you're building your building. And then eventually you become a champion. And so just people don't have the patience for time. That's the only thing I've seen. They want it like this. They're not willing to go the 15 rounds like Wetner did against Ali. So tell me on that one, just, just before we get into the AI side of it, though, do you see that culturally, because of, you know, the spike in things like social media and, you know, the way that, you know, success is portrayed in so many ways. People just, in general, aren't willing to take those hits, aren't willing to put in that degree of effort or take those risks like uh, you did. When you're vulnerable, it makes you powerful. And if you're only putting your best pictures and airbrush stuff on Facebook, well, that's great. Well, what about your best friends that sees you cry? And so they have that quote in The Wolf of Wall Street, I can tell you about all my successes, but let's talk about the few that I haven't been successful on. And when Jordan talks about the missed shots that he made in basketball, and you look at the percentages in baseball, if you're hitting four, on, you know, four, four out of 10, you're a superstar. So I think people are way too hard on themselves. And if I want to compare myself to a Zuckerberg or a Bezos or somebody like that, that's like the Rolling Stones and the Beatles. I mean, they can only be so many. Why can't you and I just be in excess and be just be successful? There's only so many kings. I'll just be a prince and be happy as a prince. And I think if you can do that, then you can have a very nice, comfortable circle and, and you, can, you can find peace with things. And there's nothing better than being proud of oneself. And there's naysayers and gray believers out there, even this AI, which might have their algorithms, which push certain YouTube videos or Instagram or Snapchat or, or even these Googles. And thankfully for me, I'm SEO heavy, but we laughed about it earlier about the name of my company, Costa Rica's call center. Of course. I mean, who is in the title? Rather, let's just try to make it as easy as possible, you know, like food, <laughs> you know, your restaurant. And so, um, I didn't want to make it complicated, but then again, I also wanted to make sure that it had substance to it. I, I just didn't want to have a fancy cover and not have a beautiful book. And so with me and with AI, I use AI for gathering. I think it's phenomenal for updating third-party information for people that do omni-channel non-voice like email and chat support. Yes, 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 and yes. I, I make that as equivalent to uh, a banking machine compared to you having go into the bank. There are certain things that are convenient, quick, you know how to do it. You're not scared about it. You're used to it. You're good to go. You know, it's part of the deal. And I'd rather go to a machine for two minutes compared to wasting an hour and 10 minutes at the bank just to take out 50 bucks. I mean, it's just stupid. And so... I've also seen that they have not perfected 
the voice activation or the IVRs because it might sound like Susan and Charlie, but the timing's off and the way they ask the questions. And sometimes to me, it may lack empathy or sincerity, or in my opinion, authenticity. It's almost like um, a verbal mannequin. I mean, it has all the expressions and features of a human being, but it's still plastic. And so they still haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> Even Teddy Ruxpin was better than what I saw today. I love <laughs> oh, Teddy no, that, that is a throwback. Wow, I do remember that one. Come on, man, that's the ago. grandpa of AI right there. <laughs> <laughs> that's very yeah. funny. Yeah, I enjoy Teddy Ruxpin better because you can hug it. But um, I've known that people like you and I press zero when voice is not working and punching in your information. And, and when you press zero, then you're coming guns a-blazing, you're frustrated, you're cursing, you're stressed. The agents are receiving it. They're doing the false, I apologize, I'm sorry, trying to calm you down. And I think it's a terrible dance. You might as well step and ruin people's shoes on that. And so I, I think there needs to be a pace or there needs to be almost the kind of thing where you can choose the kiosk or you can go like, like at the supermarket. Self-checkout is AI if you want it. But if you want to go into the line and speak to Betty, maybe you want that experience. Maybe that's what you grew up with or maybe you just enjoy it. Well, I there's research know. to show that for certain parts of society, certainly the older generation, that conversation with the, you know, the, the checkout person may be the only conversation they have with a person that day. Now you hit it. And you're wondering about retention, upsells, and referrals. How are you going to get that with AI? Do you know one of my campaigns is a movies and music campaign, and we still send out brochures and books to the 55-plus female demographic that love to go through it and choose their Elvis Presley movies, just like, just like Columbia uh, Music back in the day where you could get 10 discs for a penny. And they say, well, they could look on it online. Well, they don't want to. It's just like people that want to buy the hard copy book compared to scrolling it. There, there are certain people that prefer to see paintings over print prefer live theater over, over a movie. And I will always fight for and stand behind that interpersonal communication, the anchoring, the, the relationship you build with somebody over years, kind of like Norman Cheers. I want to call a company. I want Richard to know who I am and know my account and happy anniversary me and, and, and talk about good stuff. And that's how you get them, and that's how you keep them. And if I can imagine only... with, with the, the style of work and the style of company that you, you have right now, a lot of the time people are calling a call center because they're not happy. And to then get frustrated by an artificial experience, which then makes them feel uncomfortable, is going to make the situation even worse. Would that be a fair statement? Maybe. It depends. If they can get that resolution, fill out the form, and get some sort of ticket – that shows them it's being in progress that might make them feel better compared to waiting three hours to speak to somebody that might muck it up and, and, and ruin it. Um, it really depends on the situation, if they're computer savvy or if they're used to it, or if it's something where they have options or flexibility, they can relax. But if it's the kind of thing that is so blatant, where and I've seen it, where people will fill out a trouble ticket and they have to wait 24 hours or wait three days or it's just not resolved. During that time period, they are actively looking for an alternative. And I know that, I've seen it. And, and even my own experience when I've chosen different rate decks for other telecom companies, or I've had to work with other CRM systems and get in touch with my clients that instead of having direct contact with the CTO, I have to fill out a form, but we're working with you. I don't have a bat red phone to be able to solve this thing. And so a lot of the times prior to working with a client, we work backwards to put in all case scenarios of what could happen and to delegate and who's in charge. And anytime I have to do something like that, I will ask, if is there a plan B? And what can I do? And it's not for me and you, Richard. It's for the 25 agents that are on the phone at 235 on a Wednesday 
and they're on the phone with the client, but something's wrong with the CRM and they can put an order in. So imagine how they feel about their own job stability and satisfaction, the stress that they'll be getting that day, putting out fires. And so it's not fair for the soldier. I mean, you should reduce as much weight as possible. AI is supposed to be helping, but sometimes AI does not help. I don't like computer systems and cars. What that is doing to my car, when one thing goes wrong with that computer system and that, and that Mercedes, it's, it's the most delicate high maintenance car compared to my old Cabriolet 92 convertible, which is easy Stevie. She never goes wrong. It's the and easy if she does, you can fix. fix it with a wrench, usually. That's why that's my main ride. Because she's guaranteed chill, chill. The other one, I'm nervous every day that something's going to go wrong with her. So she looks nice. Looks nice, whatever. I'd rather have her liable, sweet, and chill. And so I don't have to worry. And so sometimes people prefer to have their server room on site compared to in the cloud. We have both. I need both. I you need, need that flexibility. You need that reliability that having both systems give you, yeah? Of course you do. And, and so these are the sort of things. Don't be pressured into doing one thing or feeling scared to do another. It's You, you should have both. There have been certain times where each one has complemented one another or it was the perfect time for that. It saved time for my IT where he can just download the stuff that was saved in the cloud when something died and vice versa. If you know, the cloud where it's on site and I could just change. And those are the times, especially with your business owners and entrepreneurs that may not be tech savvy like myself that hired the people. You need to have the faith in your Scotty on the enterprise. You really, if you do not have Cisco certificates and understand this stuff, don't touch it. And those individuals that you hire, my suggestion is to do it internally and pay for their education compared to having people come in and out that are specialists that could leave you and, and, and put your company in jeopardy. It's literally the most delicate position. It's the heart surgeon, it's the brain surgeon. And if you're not capable of trusting somebody enough and knowing somebody enough to hand over that keys to the heart of your company, you'll never grow. And so that was one of the biggest things that I had to know. So when it comes to AI, I, I always believe that I will need that human person next to me as well. Part of my company compared to AI, that would be, let's say, my CTO or just running everything. I, um, I would always need both. So it does sound to me like you are of the mindset where AI is a tool. It is not some magic wand that fixes problems or will take over. It is something to be used in specific ways, and there are some things that it's good at, and some scenarios where it's not the best choice. But it does sound like for both yourself and your wider team to try and give it to them to help them wherever possible. Would that be fair? Just yesterday, I'm trying to load up a video at this event that I was working at. And I needed Wi-Fi access for this special TV to log into something. And I'm saying to myself, you know, plug, plug, press play. It would have been working just like in school with the VCR and TV. Why does it have to be so? Now I need the Wi-Fi. Now something's not connecting. That's annoying. Why can't I have, why spend a million dollars to create a pen that writes in space when you can bring a pencil? I just don't get it. And so there are certain times you want to be fancy, dancy, fine. Do your backflips and bite your apple. But there's other times I'd, I'd rather have five pencils on me so I can guarantee to write your thing down. And I don't know. I got frustrated yesterday. For some odd reason, it wasn't working correctly in the beginning. It got fixed. But I said to myself, listen, I'm a retro guy. Why couldn't we just make it easy with one button and one joystick? It should just work. It's not that hard. Well, something needed to be adjusted, but I don't like that needed to be adjusted. Let's just say the CTO wasn't there. And it was my mother that was just putting in the Maya key and wanted to just press play. Now it's not working. And so I don't like things like that. I, 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 I want it to be simplified. And I'm impressed with people 
that have breakthrough technology and are, are making our lives more comfortable and convenient in certain aspects. But there's nothing better than a home cook meal. And there's nothing better than needlepoint. And as I mentioned, paintings. Mm -hmm. I want it raw, I want it fresh. And I want an electromagnetic energy connection between human beings before everything becomes, as I mentioned, distance and cold and, and calculated. That's not fun. There's no straight lines in nature, Richard. You know that. Life's about zigs and zags. And so, so I kind of want to catch does, that. So it does sound to me like you've got a, a very positive view of the analog world and not losing basically the soul of what we do. As you say, you know, the, the beautiful painting, the home-cooked meal, that should never be lost. and those skills hopefully will never be lost, which would be something terrible to happen. Tell me though, when you have been working through your career, you've seen lots of new technologies come along. Okay. You mentioned SEO earlier on. This is something that in the early days of Facebook, et cetera, or Google doing its thing, people are going, what on earth is this? And you, it sounds like you've embraced it and you've used it in a smart way. With AI, when was the first time you actually thought to yourself, this is interesting. Maybe I could use it in a positive way. Predictive dialers. Whew. That's the greatest yeah. thing that ever happened in my industry. Not manual dialing, not click mm -hmm. the dial, but that predictive dialer that could have two to six lines going at one time, depending on your talk time. As long as you're in ready status, you're connecting with people. So, so take, tell us, to explain a little bit more about this, because I'm not sure everybody, including myself, will fully understand. Oh, I it. apologize. You, you know, manually dialing a phone call. And if you go on mm -hmm. Skype or WhatsApp, you can click something and it will dial for you. Okay. There is a program called a predictive dialer where you would load up your numbers into this program and it would give you a screen that would give you drop downs and it would already fill out the information of names and information, depending on what the categories were, it could give you more of that stuff. And when you're in ready status, this individual will have two to six lines dialing at one time, because you don't want to have too high of a drop call ratio. You want to make sure it's depending on your talk time. And you will literally be speaking to people. Unless there's wrap up time or things like that, you could be speaking for 60 minutes in an hour. And what that has done in regards to my productivity, it went <laughs> so significant. vertical. Yeah, but here's the skinny dins. It's almost like a batting cage. Sometimes people and you being a professional athlete and fighter, you need to work up the endurance. You need to work the core and the mind to go the distance. And so if you're making 200 phone calls in your first day, you'll be exhausted. But if you've done it like myself, close to three decades, man, that's just a Wednesday. <laughs> you build that... up to it. Yeah, that's so good. I mean, it, it makes me think of, you know, the, the John Henry uh, kind of legend, the guy who took on the machine and he was the best at what he did and ended up, you know, basically killing himself, even though he beat the machine, rather than going along and saying, hey, maybe I can work with this machine. Maybe I can do some things and build up. So even people with lots of skill and experience can get this wrong. Have you seen anybody in your industry think that AI could really change things and they've just gone about it all the wrong way and really uh, hit bad things? Of course. It's like the buggy whip. I think that industry is going completely out or people wanted to hold back certain steam engines and stuff. What are you going to do? And I'll tell you what, in the days of merit, if you are better, and what the machine can do, then you'll get the business. Like for an example, in Costa Rica, they will hire people with machetes to go out there, clean your property. Now you can you know, get your lawnmower, or get these other pieces of equipment. But sometimes they go for the old schools because they really put in that detail. And they also, once again, are experts in regards to gardening and nature so they can fix things. Um, and also, the world is not made for the weak. I mean, one day, you know, the weak, the weak might inherit the earth. But for today, there is competition and you need to be strong. I'm not asking you to be reckless. But 
technology. If I didn't have a car, how am I going to get to work and go distances? If technology didn't exist this way, you and you and I, my friend, wouldn't be able to have this podcast today and see each other. So am I angry with it? No, I'm very thankful for it because I would love to get on a flight and come to Australia and meet you and sit in your office and do this. But realistically, money-wise, time-wise, this is perfect. We can, we can get these things done. And so um, don't hate it. But then again, if there are things that will be replaced, then find something else. And for me, I'm almost, as I mentioned earlier, willing to die as a linguist. I love to write rhetoric. I know that artists will say that this AI content writing for you, it might be convenient, but the artist really wants to do this. As much as you see a gorgeous painting and you see that AI does it, and you can even see the brushstrokes, there is something in Saudi that gets more excited when you see a person does it. Or what was that? What was that? Um, Chess computer, blue something? Um, blue. Deep blue. Imagine when someone beat the deep blue. That's kind of cool. You know, it's one for us. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> one for the humans. Yeah. Or, or, or when, when somebody can cross the, the oceans or when the first time people would fly around the world. And so if we can build our own wings, then that or going into space. And so it's a beautiful thing if it's done for the right things. And if it's, and if it's done for travel and for exploration or just to give people hope that they themselves can take these metal wings and fly your own place, I think that's a beautiful thing. Now, um, I like The Lawnmower Man. That was a great movie with Pierce Brosnan where this one guy, once again, it was almost like the movie Charlie that they had, I think it was called Flowers for Algodon as well, where individuals that were simple became overly intelligent. In Charlie's case, then he regressed again. But I think in The Lawnmower Man, this individual continued. And it's to the point of where you know about those theories about the AI and learning and, and growing, and there's only so much to know, and then it'll be the super thought and control everything. Well, that happens at least you have the ai podcast and maybe you might get a task because <laughs> you were their friend back in the day i think greg gutfell on fox news talks about that from time to time you know he's afraid of ai but um you really shouldn't be because uh, honestly i've seen some of these ai chatbots for interviews and it's like not quite there yet and going back to what we were talking about earlier on getting that humanity into any sort of system that makes it genuinely feel like you're talking to a person there's a huge difference there. I mean, they have to go off at the random tangents where somebody might say, hey, my dog was sick the other day. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Or, you know, my daughter's uh, had a birthday. And even down to that sort of thing, AI, whilst you can mimic it, in my humble opinion, you never quite get it. How could AI talk about its grandkids? What are you talking <laughs> What about Apple IIe? I mean, come on. It's not right. And so as I'm saying before, there are certain things where I think might become an insult when you start pretending like you are. I mean, let's let's keep it separate. I'll respect you as is. But I think we need to, and it's not for defense or insecurities, but we have a beautiful human race. And we have a beautiful culture of who we are, where we love food and music, and we love each other, and we have rituals, and we have stories and, and histories. And I don't think I'd rather, you know, it's amazing. Mothers keep the handmade cards. I still believe that we will fight to keep our identity and the things that make us exceptionally special. Even if it's just crayon scribbles, that mother will cherish that thing 10 times more than an AI Picasso that the children in kindergarten can choose their colors and put things together like a Sim City. And that's kind of cool. It's like Lego. It's nice if the children can follow those instructions and build something. But I'd rather see if you throw a thousand of those things on the floor what the kid comes up with. You know, that's, that's the treasure. That um, makes complete sense. So, so tell me then, as a piece of information advice for the listeners to take away from the call today about how they could use AI either in their personal life or in business. 
what would you say to them? What is that one piece of advice that people could take away from the call today? If AI can save you money but not compromise your ethics, then I think you should do it. A predictive dialer, companies use it constantly. I don't do robocalls. Mm -hmm. I don't call people on the do not call list. I follow United States business laws. But that, my goodness, that predictive dialer made me a fortune and got the most out of the people. I needed that. Oh, and my quality control department, the fact that I have these calls recorded and since they're putting in dispositions, mm -hmm. I can see certain statistics and metrics in real time. We can look at the calls per hour and stuff. So these are the sort of amazing gauges that allow me to regulate and, and run my business. It, it's a beautiful engine. It works. So, so tell me then, you just mentioned something that I've been experimenting with personally recently, is the ability to use AI to analyze conversations and mm -hmm. to see what the sentiment, what the emotions are. Is this something you do as well then? No, we do not. I don't, well, I'm, I'm doing it in, in the raw way where we'll listen mm -hmm. to calls and we'll analyze the soft skills and the specific vocabulary. But no, there are some programs out there that literally will break it down for you and tell you about it. And, and that's fine. Yes, there are programs doing that. Could that replace me one day? I guess. Yeah, sure. But as I say, that's like the, the YouTube instructional video compared to Mrs. Jones coming to your house to teach a piano. It's, I'm telling you, there are people out there that will want this niche. There are people out there that will still, even if it's one-tenth of one percent, I'll still be a millionaire in the business. Are people that want to press zero and speak with someone and want to go old school sepia photo where it looks like old Western. I mean, there, there's markets for everything. But they're going to overplay this. They really are. Because when you start doing too much of it, then it's going to lose its luster. People are then specifically are going to look for something else for the experience. So be careful of that. The worst thing you want to do is, is cut all of us from the team. Because then we might just say, you know, I'm going to go down to Mario's Pizza because Mario is actually there and I get to meet his wife. You know, she's right there at the register and, and everyone's at the, at the restaurant that knows my name. I think I'd much rather do that than do a kiosk, swipe the card, pick up my food in a certain section and go sit at a table by myself. Yeah. You want to eat food like that? Fine. But I don't want to do that anymore. I, I really want to smell the pizza and see the guy throwing it in, in, in the back in the kitchen. It's about the experience. It's about the atmosphere. It's about everything that goes with it. It's not just eating the pizza. There's so much more to it. How about this, Richard? It's the positive escalation. I'm going to see you there and I'm going to go, Richard, you make the best pizza in Australia. And you go, thank you, Richard. I go, yeah, my main man. And so it's the kind of thing where I would be complimenting you. I'd be telling your coworkers or your boss or anybody that would listen to me, the world. I'll let them know. Why? So someone like yourself feels good. You might put extra pepperoni on my pizza if I tell you that it's the best. I know, and that's um, a human element that AI will never understand. Unless they program it in there. But guess what? We'll be off. Their timing. Yes. They won't time it right. They'll play it wrong. It'll be too fast or too slow. It's the human nature when they have the sparkle. When there's that extended eye gaze or that pause or the tilted head or that deep breath or when that man has enough confidence to start walking across that dance floor and asking the girl their dreams to dance. AI will never be able to do that. They'll never that's be That's how I ended up in Australia. So that's a different story entirely. And so uh, am I against it? No, my friend. But this, this popular kid in school needs to calm down a little bit. You're still the new kid in school. And there's some old groups like Richard and I that, that hang out. And I, I don't want you separating us. We do things a certain way. And so you can sit at our table, you can join our crew, but don't you dare separate Richard and me. I don't want that to happen. Sounds like great advice. Richard, this has been a wonderful conversation. It literally could go on for hours, I'm sure. Uh, but sadly, I have to ask you, where can people find you and what exciting projects do you want them to take a look at? Of course. Well, I have a very large Facebook fan page 
And when this goes live, you'll have 131,000 local Costa Rican Ticos that will see what you're doing. And we'll also give your audience a, a nice idea of the business process outsourcing industry here in Costa Rica. I mean, we are known as the only democratic society in Central America. Amazon, HP, Intel, and Oracle are here. We have the most neutral English accent, best infrastructure, known for some of the best surfing in the world. But uh, what projects am I working on? Well, it's funny that you ask. Just wanted to let you know that I am literally the Could biggest the next guest fan in Costa Rica. You like that? I do. And I had happened to hire Gary Gary Beers to play bass on a song that I produced here with the band Igni Faroki. Song Shine Like the Sun will be coming out soon. And so I had this amazing experience to work with one of the greatest bass guitarist ever and a proud member of my favorite band so yeah that's my project i'm working on i thought it was kind of interesting that you guys can relate to that too and i guess my final advice for your audience is just be proud of yourself do not be hard on yourself and if you can do things with honorable intentions then maybe you can sleep well at night and um that's kind of how i was able to have the sort of gasoline in my tank to get me to where i am today Richard, thank you for that. This has been so much more than just an AI conversation. And for that, I say thank you. My brother, appreciate it. Well, that's a wrap on another awesome guest episode for the Evolvepreneur AI Advantage Show. Just before you go, if you like this episode, we would be very grateful for a five-star review. Please also consider recommending the show to a friend or two. Make sure you subscribe for future episodes at AIadvantage.show right now. Until next time. I'm Richard Ray, and if you're an entrepreneur, get the AI advantage today.